Hey everyone, how you doing? So I'm back for another uh, video quick tutorial um, here and I'm gonna do some little zine. I'm gonna do a little zine. I love zines. As a book artist, I've been making zines for years. Um, these are just a few little ones I've worked on recently. I just love them because you can make small little collections that you can um, you know, share with your um, your supporters, your audience. You can make these little books that capture your art, your jelly prints and what have you, and maybe just sell them for $5 or something like that. If you do craft shows or if you, you know, have some stuff up on Etsy or internet, whatever you want to do with them, they're just great little structures. And so I have a variation. <clears throat> I have a bunch of them. I have, like, I just sometimes have them sitting on my desk. This is using handmade papers and some of my Kuba Swooza cloth stuff. And then, you know, I have pages. These actually, a lot of times that I'm sending things out and I want to send gifts to um, to a lot of you guys who either purchase things or support me in different ways. This one has a fold out. Um, I have these I make up and I date stamp them and sign them. And they're just fun little journals that I can share um, with you all. And then, you know, you can go from there with them. So I have like a number of them, different ones over here that I have sitting on my desk. And then I also make these little zines, which are fun. Um, so I also like using them in my books. You may have seen that, but like a lot of times I'll make, like this is my book I'm working on in Patreon. And this is like Lady Cunard, man, paying homage to Nancy Cunard. And so I made this little zine, little folio, ends of old this is really old paper so it's kind of like cracking and stuff which is what i wanted I put a photocopy that i did my silvering on the jelly printing on it it's a technique that i i discovered came across and it's called silvering and i love doing this my photos but anyway and i just stuck that in there so i thought what it would be neat is to show you guys how just another variation on how to make these so first of all, you see, I got a lot of my tea stained paper in front of me. So these are just my, like a lot of times when I'm working on my desk here, I put down this paper and um, to catch the jelly printing and the inks and stuff. And so this is one that I did. And then I just pulled it off and I wanted to tea stain and just flipped it over and tea stained on. And you can see how the ink and stuff has just bled and stuff. But there's like so many great sections here. Look at that. That just is divine. And then some of the tape that I would have used to tape my page down with is on there. So you can kind of see the tape marks. And so I keep all that on there. So all this is good. So we're going to work with, I pulled this, tore this piece out. So we'll use this little piece. But I just wanted to show you, I'm using those same tea stained papers that I've shown you. And then this is a piece of paper that I tea stained that said um, I had a pad of that uh, scrapbooking paper. And actually, this little yellow muted, once it got tea stained, is not bad. I'm not still crazy about the powder. I was going to cover it up. But so this is just a strip of paper. And we're going to turn this into a zine, okay? that we can actually use as a tuck book to put inside of our journals. I mean, you could just, these could be standalone or you can do them as tuck spots, you know, your choice. So what I'm gonna do is just a piece of scrap paper to work on here. Mm -hmm. Use some of this because I'm going to decoupage this front. So I love these napkins. And I had already been decoupaging some playing cards. And so I had this little bit left over, which is why they're stuck together. So I'm going to decoupage over this yellow. So I thought that even if bits and pieces of yellow show, I'm good with that. It's just that it covers it up with something that I like to look at. So using, oh, don't tell me I'm out of, um, well, I know I bought some more Mod Podge. Okay, where's the Mod Podge? I just bought a whole thing of it. Yeah, here it is. Oh, I almost concerned myself there because I knew I was out of this little bottle. Just need to throw that away. <clears throat> so, what we'll do is just get a 
brush. So we're gonna first get this right. I always kind of wet my brush just to get it started. And I definitely like putting this down. Just put a piece of wax paper or something. That way it keeps your top from getting all um, this off. It's kind of the way getting stuck every time you try to go to release it. So just kind of spread this all over. And this is a great way to like, if you have papers that you're not crazy about, you know, we all have tons of these um, scrapbooking papers. I swear, I'm not even wanting to buy them and I still seem to have a lot of them. Like either I may buy them because it's a few papers in them I like, especially I love flocking papers and they only seem to put a few flock papers in these pads. And sometimes if I really, really want one really bad, I just go ahead and buy the whole thing. Then I'm left with this stuff or sometimes people give them to me or, you know, and I'm not really crazy about the patterns. Like 90% of them, I don't care for the patterns, but it is still good paper and it does tea stain nicely. So decoupage them. So we're going to just put this right over like that. Okay. That gives us just get this over real quick. So that gives us one really good layer. So then we'll just come back and um, take some of our Mod Podge and <clears throat> just put a layer over top of it like this. You guys have seen this before. And this is just three ply napkins that I buy. Um, you know, you can buy them anywhere. Whenever you see a pattern that you like, like I love this Nautilus. And I also love like the old writing on them and stuff. So when I find some napkins I like, I just purchase them. And then you pull them apart because they're three ply. And you just get down to this one little single thin ply like this, you know. And then those decoupage nicely. I'm sure you've seen this before. I don't think this is anything new, but if it is, because I know sometimes you think um, some stuff that I would think I would know, then I come across I'm like, oh, mom, I never saw that. Or somebody will ask me, you've seen this? And I'm like, no, I haven't. So it's not always, we don't see everything. So that's why I was just sharing. If you happen to not, it's just napkins. And then, of course, using the Mod Podge. So now what I want to do is I just want to kind of like <clears throat> add some in. So I'm going to tear bits and pieces of this one that I like. And I want to cover this yellow up there a bit. So let me see what I'll do. I'll just put it down like that. And then just kind of create another layer. So I'm just going to kind of collage on top of this layer like this. And uh, let's see, I like this piece here. I love this decoupage thing anyhow. I think it's so cool. I love decoupage. I always have loved to decoupage. And especially working with thin papers and stuff like this. So it's a great way to get some quick interest you know, on your surfaces and still, you know, coming, walking away with something that's different and that, you know, still can speak to, you know, your art. You can even do this over, I've decoupaged over my jelly prints that are especially that I'd use as textural backgrounds. Like, one, you know, the ones that I make that really look like, um, that really look like walls. Let me see. Let me see another piece of something here I want. Well, this is a big piece right here. I have some that, you know, of course, really look like old walls and stuff like that. And then you get a a texture like this and um, like that. It's not right. And then you can just looking for a little element. Like maybe this is good right here. I 
going to write like that. I don't know where I want to put it. Maybe I don't. Maybe this is okay. What do you think? Maybe something smaller. That's what the problem is. Just a little star. I just want to put something right there. Okay, there we go. So, um, and then, you know, if you get like um, a... napkin or you know you have a pattern that really works with that sort of background like this really looks good this pattern really looks good on um <clears throat> like this on um those old wall kind of backgrounds especially if i use like the lighter colors because it almost is rem rem reminiscent of sort of like beachy or some found in sands or rocks or something like that so Get creative even with your jelly print backgrounds to um, decoupage over. All righty, so this out of the way. Back back on there like this, so I don't have to worry. It's time to take this off. Okay, so now this is good. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'm going to do is just kind of like to press it down in here. This is not going to be completely dry by the time it takes for me to start showing you guys. Oh, by the time I put the, my little star on there and it, all the things it pulled off. Don't you just love that? I think it was a little too wet. That's okay. I'm going to put it right it's after all it's decoupage right let's put it right back <laughs> okay ready I'm just kind of like kind of starting to dry this a little bit too because it is not going to be dry but we're going to keep going so i'm gonna go ahead and cut off this extra right here so we have the back side so this is going to form the front folios which can be decorated like a ton of different ways but you guys I'm sure have lots of ideas I'm just going to show you the basic structure okay so now we have this wonderful inside paper that is um tea stained and now we have that look how much better that looks I mean that little bit of yellow popping through is like totally cool because it goes with this pattern but yet you know it's not that paper <laughs> okay so now while we're going to let that dry here what I do want to go ahead and fold this down so let's go ahead and fold this in the middle, so we're gonna take it and fold it right in the middle using our bone folder. And then opening it up, I'm gonna take and fold to one side, lift it up, increase it from the middle up like that. You guys can see that. And then what I do, that way you don't get extra um, material like we took the whole thing like this and fold the whole thing over like that and you get a, a fold in the middle but then you have extra material in there and then your books don't necessarily line up the best so then what you do is you take because we have to put a fold here so then you take and fold it this way and lift it up and crease it okay and then that way you have a folio that will be even like you see these your sides let me see if I can show you See the sides line up, like they're not like a little bit bigger or you know a little bit. That's how you get it so that your folds, you know, are square. Now that's great. That's a perfect pattern there in the middle, and I love the back. Wow, that worked out well. <laughs> Could have done if I planned it. Okay, so that's the front covers, and we have these inside folds. But what we're what we're going to focus on is now. This is the inside of our book. We have four pages in our little folio. 
So this is what I wanted to show you next. Because we want to make it a little bit more interesting than this. So what we're going to do is, um, my idea is to make some extra fold out. So let's see, is this, okay, good. This is about the length of that. So I'm not a measurer. I just kind of eyeball everything. So I want this to kind of fall slightly inside. So I'm folding it up just slightly inside of my edge, just, you know, like a 16th of an inch top and bottom. You see that just, just a little bit and over here in the top, just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to take that and get a good fold. And I'm going to go ahead and um, oh, that's, that basically took it right in half. So we can use this whole piece of paper. And I like the fact that it looks, you know, already nice and grunge and all that yummy stuff. So now this is just a little bit bigger. But I want to keep the, the messy edge. Because this is, you know, our little... So I'm going to fold this slightly inside of this fold here. Because I'm going to actually tape this in. So I want um, enough space to grab the tape and the, the paper. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take and tear this off. Okay. And I want this to fold. If I have this in here like that, this is where the fold is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and create my fold so that I roughly have the spot that this is going to fold in here. So you see, this is where we want it to fold. And I can always get rid of a bit of that edge. So, so I have this overhang here. So I'll get rid of that once I get everything in the journal good. So that works there. And see what it's going to do is it's going to get, what I wanted to show you guys is a fold inside of a fold. So we're going to, we're going to add to the amount of pages that's in this little zine. They could just be another journaling spot. Um, you could actually have your prints in here like this. So this doesn't have to be blank paper. It could literally be printed paper. I'm going to really keep this little rackety edge because <laughs> I want it to look like that. So I'm just going to rip a little bit of this off because it's not quite so big. Okay. So, same thing here. So, roughly, it'll be roughly about the same amount because I'm going to have to um, take a bit off the edge, anyhow, to you know, to even it up once it closes. So, we're just going to get rough dimensions. And because this is like you know, like a little zine in our junk journal and what have you. You don't have to measure it exactly. Now, of course, if you wanted this to be more precise, you can measure it out, but you could basically almost still do it the same way I'm doing it because I find of all the years of making books, I'm telling you, I used to stress about measurements. And then I found like, if I just kind of eyeballed it and then use a straight edge to, to, um, to get, you know, straight lines, like to put it on your mat where you could have gridding, like uh, for instance, once I eyeballed this, now if I wanted to make sure that it's totally straight, then I could put it on a grid and do it. But I've been doing this for so long. See how straight it is? It actually is straight. I've just been doing this for so many years. But you know, you could already have like said, okay, this is roughly what I want. And then you can then lay it down and then use your straight edge and, you know, and your exacto knife, right? and then go ahead and clean your edges up. I find it's easier to do it that than to be measuring, measuring, measuring. You know, if you know you want it to be a certain dimension on the page, just go ahead and kind of roughly get it there. And then once you have, then you can take it and lay it on your grid and clean the edges up. That's what I do. It, and, it's, and I find that I have less error than if I try to do all of that, um, 
see this one is there near perfect it's only off just a little it's really not even off down here so trust me that's the easiest way of doing it and then pull your pad out versus measure 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 and then you mess up so much paper because <laughs> oh my goodness it never seems like it measures the same way twice at least i don't seem to have that luck maybe you're a little better at it than me then then I would suggest stick to the method that works for you. But if you're like me and you're constantly trying to figure it out and what have you, then that's the method I do. And I have found that it's very successful. So all this little rip paper down in there, I like that. I want that to be a part of this little zine. But of course, if you didn't, you know, you would not select that. And also um, just know that, um, that all of this could be all jelly prints. It could be all really, you know, pristine paper. Okay, so when we're done, the whole idea is that this is gonna fold. I'm just kind of making sure it all is gonna basically work. I got this little overhang. I think I'm gonna just get rid of it now, that little bit. <clears throat> this is gonna be hanging out and I don't want that hanging out. But if you wanted it hanging out, you could, you know, have the raw edges. Okay, so this is fitting in there nicely. Look at that, so cute already. Now I'm gonna show you one last little grunge technique that I wanna use. And I got a love giving credit to people when I see something that they've done that I really like and that I end up using. Um, Cause you know, you guys know how particular I am about <laughs> my little design aesthetic and using things that look like my aesthetic. Well, I was at, um, but I do follow a lot of people. You know, I do support a lot of people on YouTube. I love the creatives that are over here and lots of good ideas. And those, some of them are not, a lot of them are not necessarily my style or I wouldn't necessarily use those techniques. I still like seeing them and I like the passion that people have around what they do, right? So. But when I do see something that I really like, I like to give credit. And Luna Rosu, L-U-N-A, I don't know if I'm getting the last names pronounced right, but it's spelled R-O-Z-U. Oh, I love her channel. She's got a lot of passion. She does the junk journals and she does a lot of the boho, yummy, junky, gypsy type that I like anyway. So um, I like her and she does, she does a lot of flips on her journals. She doesn't necessarily show a lot of how to's, but I noticed recently she has been doing more little tutorials and stuff like that. So she did one on antiquing papers and love that. And so, But what I really loved is this tan tape that she used. It made it like, it was brilliant. It's like, you can buy this stuff. I looked it up and it's called, it's tan tape. This one is by Duck. I think Scotch does it. But the way she used it, which I'm gonna show you, it just looks like old tape. Like the tape just got old. Oh, perfect for junk journals, perfect for, just given that look, right? So we're gonna do that right down the middle here, but let's also just rough these pages up just a little bit. Um, you know, just, you know, I don't really overdo it, but you know, just a little bit so that, uh, um, so that it kind of keeps with the theme of, you know, the old pages and the junk journal and look and all that good stuff. So these are already pretty rough. So then I like to I like to use the antique. She uses tea dye, which I haven't been able to find tea dye. I, I would love to because I really like the color that it does. She also uses vintage photo. I'm okay with vintage photo. It's like a little too dark for my taste because I don't really like things that look like it's actually been, you know, that's just me. Um, but I do like antique linen. I've been using this forever. You can tell this is like an old pad. I think this is one of the first distressed because they look different now. They have, uh, he does a big distressed ink thing on it now, but. So I just use my um, refill. I buy the refill and just keep my pad going. But I love this antique linen. And because it's light enough that it doesn't look, you know, too, like you've done too much to the thing, which I don't care for personally. 
I just like it. To, you know, I like the idea of it having a little something on these rough edges, but not too much. So here we are. Okay. Okay, but do that to your liking. And now, so I'm going to lay this down. It's in the folds, okay? This one's in the folds. Okay, so now this is in place. Now we're going to take this. I've already kind of stripped it a bit. So what you do is you take the full piece, and then what you want to do is you want to just kind of cut it so that it resembles the you know more like the width of uh, scotch tape. So we're just going to go ahead and cut some of this off. And uh, this is good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally lay this down without trying to move it too much. It's right where it needs to be. And then just kind of scrunch it a little bit. You know, you kind of want it to have that old tape look like it just kind of went down or over time it's just kind of gotten a little you know funky there let's use our bone folder and this will hold that okay I wanted to, I could flip it over, but I don't, because I don't really want that on the back side. But if you if you had a, a design or something there that it worked well with, you could. But truthfully, this little zine, this is going to hold it in just fine. If you're making something bigger, or you might want to have put glue down already, or you might want to um, um, use like the double-sided tape. Where is it? Like score tape, like really thin score tape. You know, you could have put that down on your pages and then put this over top. But for this little zine, this is going to work just fine. And I just love this. This is brilliant, Luna. Brilliant. This was everything. Just good old packing tape. And the funny thing about it, as soon as I saw a video, I went on Amazon because, you know, Amazon is my friend. And I was going to order it. And I think it was like nine something for a roll, which I'm fine with. I'll pay whatever. If I'm, if I'm really on to something, I know I'm going to use it. I'll pay for it. And um, and I don't know what something, before I actually press purchase, something made me go down and look in my, um, my laundry room because I know I have like packing tapes and stuff down there. Lo and behold, I had two of these on the shelf. Like if you had asked me if I had these in my house, I'd say, oh, no, because I was going to buy it. And then I had two of them. This is the Duck brand. Oh. I was elated. I could come right and do it. So I've been playing with that idea of my other journals. Like I'm working on this one over on Patreon. This one's called Lady Cunard. We're working through a lot of it, but um, I'll show you. Like I did it. This was the first time I tried the technique and just using old, you know, packing paper. Cause I'm thinking Lady Cunard, she ran an hour's press. She's a printing press, she print, printed poetry books and things like that. I'm thinking, oh, she would have, um, probably had some brown paper and paper taken. Maybe she was making notes or something like that. And she would have just had this little piece hanging around and stuck it in a book. And then here I was creating um, just an old piece of ephemera that she would have had in her book. This is from an old um, print. That I own. I got this um, a few years back. When I go to Europe, I'm always looking for old book plates and ephemeris. I bought this when I was in Paris one year. It's a beautiful book. Oh, I love it. So this is like really old, probably early 1900s. And so I photocopied it on tea stained paper and then, you know, antiqued it all up and all that good stuff. And then I made a tuck spot in here. But then I use the brown packing tape on the bottom as well, just to kind of add, you know, to that look of just time worn. So that um, is what I was doing. So I wanted to show you guys this little idea. I said, well, this would be a great way to make a zine too, quite frankly. So now what's happening here is, let's make sure that this is all going to work. Okay, so I'm going to fold that. 
So now with that tape there, it makes that fold a little thicker, but that's okay. Just use your bone folder. You can really just bone fold that down. Oh, I love it. So look, just a quick little zine. <clears throat> And you could do this, you know, like what I've done, just using old tea stained papers. And I wanted to show you ways that I use my tea stained paper since I have shown you how I tea dye and coffee dye. And um, also, um, you know, we work with a lot of these papers. So I well, let me just show you how you could take some of those papers and real quick, you could decoupage or you could use some of your old jelly prints um, and what have you and just take a strip, make yourself a little book and then using some of your your papers, look how this fold out, see how this works? So this is really good. Um, and so now we have extra, we've doubled our space for writing or imagery. If this is some of the images of our jelly prints, we've actually doubled that space by just putting this little piece in here like this. And I love the way, um, so I'm gonna just cut this, that little extra there. Um, I think what I can do is let's do it like this. See this little extra tape on either side. Let's just clip that down like that. And then you can just actually do like that and just leave it folded down so it's not flapping up every time we lift that. Okay, there we go. And it just adds to the the oldness, <laughs> see? So what I did is I just clipped that so that this will fold back and forth independent of um, that. We can do the same thing on this side. So just same thing. Just cut that and then just put it down, hold your finger and when you go to pull it back, it'll just naturally finish tearing at the right spot. Okay, same thing, there. So there we are. So now we've actually really, you know, quadrupled our space in our little zine. Little flip, here we are. Flips this way, uh, we can flip it that way. How cool would this be for you guys to just grab some jelly prints right now, some ones that, you know, there's only bits and pieces that you like, or they're just, you know, sitting around, you're not really doing anything with them. And create one of these little zines, make the little fold out so you have those extra pages. And you immediately have like a little book of some artwork that maybe you don't like the full page, but there are bits and pieces of it that you do like. So cut those bits and pieces and create a little something like this and just have a lot of fun. So wanted to show you guys that. Take care, have a great week, and I'll be back um, next week with some more of what I'm doing here in the studio. And this right here would go great. I actually have a pocket in the back of this book that I um, that I actually made like this little envelope and I decoupage this one side and then the other side is just brown craft paper. So I actually could stick this down in here too. How cool is that? That actually works in here. That might find its way into this little book. So anyway, there we are. Take care, guys. And until next time, happy creating and enjoy your time in your studio. And thanks God, again for being over here with me, supporting me over here on YouTube, following me. If you like what I'm doing, please, you know, just thumbs up the video and subscribe because I'll just keep on having just little ideas like this that I'll throw out and share with you guys. So you can see what I'm doing inside of my journals as well. All right. Take care. Love you all. And um, until next time, happy creating.